higher. With zero modulation at the bottom of the display and 100% modulation corresponding to the peak sync amplitude. Black level should correspond to 76% and on this channel is measured as 76%. Whilst that at peak white level should correspond to 20% and in this case is measured at 24%. With the analyzer displaying the output video signal, what we can do now is check for any low frequency distortion produced by the transposer on the received input signal. The field distortion is measured as a percentage amplitude variation, and in this case, on this channel, is negligible. Now any non-linearity produced by the transposer will result in intermodulation product being produced. We can use the analyzer to check on the degree of non-linearity by measuring the vision to sound crosstalk. Yes. If we center the sound carrier on the display and then adjust the analyzer so that the vision crosstalk can be seen on the sound carrier, then by selecting the analyzer to display in the linear mode, and adjusting the amplitude of the signal to cover five divisions of the graticle, which corresponds to 100% of the sound carrier amplitude, then the crosstalk is read directly as a percentage. In this particular case, we have 6%. Superior signals are categorized as in-band and out-of-band. In-band products will result in a degradation of the transmitted signal, while out-of-band products will result in unwanted frequency components in other channels. The most significant products are those at 1.57 MHz from the vision carrier. If present to a significant extent, these will result in a pattern on the display. The in-band products should be within the specifications for the site. Any other spurious product should be noted. Generally, the most significant out-of-band products are those at F-Vision minus 6 MHz and F-Vision plus 12 MHz, the image frequencies of the sound and vision carriers respectively. The AGC circuit of the transposer should be able to maintain the output power constant with a reduction of 16 dBs in the input received signal. The AGC threshold is checked by using a variable attenuator connected to the input filter of the transposer. If we increase the attenuation until the power normal LED goes out, then the amount of attenuation gives the AGC threshold. We should find that this should be equal to or better than 16 dBs. Providing the phase lock loop circuits of the transposer remain in lock, then the output vision carrier will be locked to the internal 5 MHz oscillator. Any variation in this 5 MHz oscillator will result in an error in the output vision carrier. This monitoring point allows the oscillator frequency to be checked. The counter at the moment is looking at the internal 5 MHz oscillator and the frequency error is about 2 Hz. The frequency of the oscillator can be adjusted here. We would normally record these results on this performance sheet, Dave. This would then provide a continuous record of the state of the equipment for the site. Yes, I suppose if we find one of the transposers is faulty, we replace it with the spare unit and take the faulty one back to base. Yes, that's the easiest way of dealing with the problem. We take it back to base where a more detailed check could be made of it. Since it could be more than six months before we actually come back to the Hope and the Dinmore, it's worthwhile us just having an inspection of the site. The things we should look at is the power distribution board for loose connections, also the state of the building, security of the site and inspection of the mast.
Now, although these checks have been carried out on the Silver Street, David, I'm sure you can see that we can easily adapt them for different sites with different transposer equipment. Yes, I can see that. Yeah. I suppose the only monitoring provided is that by the local dealer. Yes, that's right, and it's probably worthwhile us going down and seeing how he's getting on. Fine. 